All right, welcome to Move of the Day. This is a series I'm going to do where I'm going to try to explain something that happened in the candidates tournament that was both pivotal to the tournament and just something of depth and beauty that I hopefully can explain. And today's move really is dark and secretive. Uh, it took me a really long time to, to understand it myself. And so what I'm going to try to do is present it on three levels. Just one, my very basic naive GM understanding of what was going on at the time. I wasn't using any kind of computer. And then really just uh, some commentary that Magnus did, Magnus Carlson, on the position, uh, very human understanding. And I, honestly, I think it went over my head at the time and it was only later, much later in the game that I said to myself, Oh, that was a really deep thing that the guy said. So I'm going to try to explain his thought to you guys, which is, uh, you know, I think hard for him to explain because he's already on another level. And then I'm going to say a couple things that the computer said along the way. And I did that at the very end. So let's get into it. This is the game round one with uh, Ding Loren as white against Wang Hao as black. Ding Loren, of course, a favorite to win this event. And if we go back just one move here, um, my just intuitive assessment of this position was this was exactly what Wang Hao, excuse me, what Ding Loren wanted, which is something that feels uh, like a maneuvering game where he is a little bit better. Um, and even that little bit better for my human eyes, it was really hard to, you know, say with any kind of certainty that he is better. But, you know, let's just say from White's sake that this knight will someday come to c4. This bishop looks bad. This pawn looks like a weakness. And this pawn may be a weakness. But, again, this is just my naive understanding. The one thing I did feel that I understood here was that white eventually wants to play f4. And the reason for this is that his bishop wants freedom and that f2 pawn wants to fight for the center. But the freedom of the bishop mean, being the most important feature of that. If the bishop on b2 looks great, but if it's you know caged by the pawn on e5, then it's not gonna be that impressive of a piece. Okay, so um, Ding's move, bishop f3, just makes a lot of sense in this because the bishop on g2 is white's worst piece and he needs to get rid of the bishop on h5, which is, you know, making f4 difficult because of bishop e2 stuff uh, at some point. And also, you know, we're not, we're not really ready yet, nor is there any rush. So bishop f3... Now, here's where it gets really interesting. By the way, the computer says white is clearly better. And again, that was not my interpretation, uh, just looking at it. Um, and I guess for the long-term things, that I, the same things I mentioned. Now, this next move, which I'm calling the move of the day, is not the computer's, the computer isn't wild about this move. It doesn't think that solves black pro black's problems. But what I'm going to try to do is explain Magnus's comment that he made at the time. That this is made at a time where he didn't see, he didn't know what was going to happen in the rest of the game. And so let's just put it on the board. It looks innocent enough, Queen G5. And what Magnus said, and at the time I was, I just like, I had no idea really what he was talking about, was he said the point of Queen G5 is to provoke H4. Now, the first thing we should see is that when you turn on the computer, it gets confusing because the computer sees that, you know, you don't need to play h4, nor does it say that h4 really bothers white's position. So it's like it doesn't, it doesn't understand, it's not seeing the game from a human element. And I'm going to try to put in words what I think Wang Hao was thinking. If he wasn't thinking it, it's what transpired. And that is this. If white plays h4, which looks such like a natural move, then there's a couple ways it can go down. Because remember, white does want to play f4 eventually. 
Now, you can imagine the position with f4 being without the queens, and we're going to see that in the game, or you can imagine it with the queens. With the queens on, the pawn on h4 will be weak, and more importantly, the white king's position will be substantially more loose when f4 comes. With the queens off, then that pawn on h4 might become weak. And that's in fact what happens in the game and really decides the game. Um, so what I want you to see is that this move is a very dark human move where, you know, honestly, you could play this move and maybe not even see the dark strategy behind it. Magnus saw it instantly though, which I find just fascinating. Um, now the computer, it wants to do something like queen d1 and it says white is substantially better. Do I see that with my human eyes? Not necessarily. I, I would agree that white's better, but uh, I don't see the substantial part of that analysis. So in order to explain this, we're going to have to go fast forward in the game a little bit and realize that both sides are going to make inaccuracies from like an objective or computer point of view. But what I really want to focus on is that the strategy of provoking h4, first of all, as a defensive maneuver, right, is what's going to determine, let's call it the narrative of this game. And a lot of times in, you know, super GM matchups like this one, you don't really see a narrative because one side is trying to thwart another. But in this case, Ding walks right into the idea, the narrative that Wang Hao is constructing with Queen G5 and to provoke H4. So let's take a quick look at just how things go. He goes for it immediately, H4. And honestly, to my eyes, it seems just totally... Uh, innocuous this h4 move at least at first glance okay then he goes back we do our trade and now h5 and this i believe is part of the strategy from the beginning just to fix the pawn on a dark square so now the if we go if we keep the queens on and play f4 uh, the white king will be much weaker and we'll have access to squares like g4 and we'll, we're going to see what happens if we go to the end game. Okay, queen f5. And again, I think this is part of a strategy uh, that Wang Hao does here, because honestly, he could probably take the queen here and play a move like f6 and be okay. But like I said, I think there's what you're gonna see here is just a broader strategy of what he's trying to do here. Defensively, really, to say, I'm just gonna make it very difficult for the tournament leader, the favorite, to play f4. And that's precisely what we're going to see. Rook a d8, f6, knight c4, king f7. Black's just presume, pr improving his position. And now, ding, plays right into it, f4. And so the, one of the amazing things is this move, queen g5, was played on move 21. And here we are almost 10, year, 10 moves later. <laughs> I almost said 10 years. 10 moves later. And we're getting this f4 break. Um, and you can see that if you believe that you uh, should be better in this position, or if you are expected to win, then f4, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do, right? Now, in hindsight, I'm sure Ding is in his hotel room there in Moscow, or not in Moscow, in Petersburg, and saying to himself, oh, well, I shouldn't have done it. Well, <laughs> We've all been in this situation where we feel we we need to try to win, and this is the only move that really is going to do it. And that's one of the interesting things is also when we go back to the queen g5 move to say to yourself, right, f4 is the only way this guy's making progress, and if I get him to play h4, then that will be substantially more difficult and dangerous for him to do it. So here we go, f4. And f5 x clan. And it's already getting kind of edgy for white. e5, rook e6. And this is the problem because the rook is coming around. And here's actually another interesting psychological moment. If white wants to save it, he needs to start thinking of ridiculous moves like king h3. Moves that you're not going to play if you, you, uh, if you really understand you're only going to play if you really understand the danger of the position. And even then, you know, you're not going to... It's just so sad to put your king on h3. Of course you want to be centralized. 
Now, this is a funny little dance where um, I just want to say this is, this is where the computers can kind of wreck the game but also show us something kind of amazing. Um, in the analysis, every GM, including myself, thought that the following maneuver by Black to give White the tempo here, to say you are in Zook Swan, everyone thought that was ingenious. And it does look like it on the surface. Uh, and we're going to see that the game tenu continuation really does confirm all of Wang Hao's plans. But in fact, here with this ingenious Zug Swan, he gave White an amazing op opportunity to get back into the game, or at least not lose the game. So if you want, you can pause and try to see what White could have done here. Uh, and I'm going to show it, but again, it doesn't really take away from me the strategic brilliance of the game. It's just like one of these technical things that you can't allow. And, and seeing it would just have been really impressive if Black had seen this resource. And of course, White didn't see it either. I should remark that this is move 40 that, uh, for Ding. So it's his last move before he gets a little bit more time. And he plays Rook DD2. And I'm going to show you the, end, the finish of the game here. But the amazing opportunity was d4, x clan, And you say to yourself, what? Well, takes, and it's actually white who's winning after rook c2. Really incredible. Because after rook c6, that's the reason we can't take on e3. And after rook c6, the pawn's going to fall. And, and honestly, the whole position's going to fall apart. So black would have to play. The rook takes d4. And then amazingly, we've got that tactic. So that's some computer stuff, but that's the other level of analysis. And, you know, the computer doesn't understand Queen G5 at all, but it's this kind of thing. <laughs> it's really like blow our minds and show us why we're always going to lose to the computer. All right, let me show you the great finish of this game. Rook G4, exclam. You can't really take the thing. G6, just pleased this punch with himself. Takes, F takes, look at this. And just resigns. Uh, Black, you know, I wouldn't have resigned in this position if I was white, but they are at a much higher level. And I can, of course, see that this is bad news. The problem is simply this king is coming to f5. This pawn is going to go to g3. This king's going to go to g4. And all the while, you've got to deal with this threat and rook d4. So here he resigned. Really, the culmination of a defensive strategy that began with the move of the day Queen G5. So I thank you for watching. I'm going to be back here tomorrow and we'll do round two. Bye-bye.